Hello everybody and welcome to this slightly, well, actually a lot different video than you would expect from me normally. The reason I'm doing this in English is because this video is for Peter Giddy and for the people who don't know Peter Giddy, Peter Giddy is one of the greatest jazz musicians I ever met. He was born in Glasgow, he had Italian roots and I had the honor to portray him and interview him, do a video interview with him for a special project in the Jazz Machine Rotterdam in collaboration with uh, Jazz TV. And although Peter was late and it was the last day, it was a very hot day, like today, but hotter. And we were tired and Peter was late and it was like, well, what, what should we expect? And Peter came in and he was such a nice warm guy and then he started telling jokes and stories and eventually it became well actually one of the greatest stories or although maybe the greatest story we recorded for that show and well also in the years also in the years after that uh, every time when I meet P Peter it was a lot of jokes a lot of laughs we had fun, uh, he was a great musician, he did a lot for the jazz scene in the Netherlands, uh, he started, he co-founded the Jazz Junior Orchestra, one of the greatest junior big bands in the Netherlands. And just as a small tribute, I wanted to show you the video interview of, from the story he told during the project we recorded on with the Jazz TV project. I think it's a great story, it's about taking risk, it's about being young and just go for it when you want to do something and I think it can inspire a lot of people and um, I want to wish all the best wishes to his friends, his family, Peter we will miss you a lot and um, well just enjoy the uncut version of the interview we did with Peter. Yeah, so like when, when I'm telling the story, I look at you or I just, yeah. I look at you. Yeah, as if I'm telling you the story. Yeah. <coughs> Could you clap in your hands one time? Just one clap like this. Okay. Could you do that? You want me to clap one yeah. time? One, one clap. Yes. Just for syncing the cameras. Oh, of course, like the clapperboard. That's why it was called a clapperboard. Never thought of that. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, I suppose uh, you could call this, this story the beer that changed my life. Um, the family been living in Jersey in the Channel Islands <clears throat> and then um, because of my mother, my mother was, was ill and she wanted to go back home to Italy so we moved back to Italy, we moved back to our roots in Tuscany in a little town called Badga which um, actually today has a, an, an international jazz festival where we played a couple of years ago with the Jazz Mania Big Band which was great for me to play in that little town but at that time Badga was a, a cultural desert. There was nothing going on, absolutely nothing. And I thought, well, I want to be a musician. <clears throat> I better go to um, where it's all happening. And that was Milan, in Milano. But I didn't know anybody there. All I knew was uh, <clears throat> the Bad Plinius at the other side of uh, the Galleria del Corso, Piazza Duomo, Bad Plinius. And that's where all the musicians went to hang out. And I was looking for work uh, uh, in, in hotels or clubs or whatever was, was going at that time. And so I went to Milan with 40,000 lira. Now, 40,000 lira sounds like a lot of money. <laughs> but when you think that a basic pizza costs 500 lira, you realize how little that was. I, so I got a boarding house, a pensione, on the outskirts of town because it was cheaper. <clears throat> I, I, I paid for a week. And every day I would go by Plinius to check if there was any work uh, uh, around. And Plinius and me, we got to, we got to know each other. And I, I think he liked me because I was, uh, I was young, I was naive and broke. <laughs> uh, 
and I think he, he felt a little sorry for me. He tried to help me, but he said to me, Peter, you're too late. You should have been here a month ago. All the bands have, have already, have already uh, got their personnel for the summer season. You should have been here a month ago. You're too late. You won't find work now. I went there every, every day. And I get to the last day, and I'm out of money. <clears throat> I, I really didn't know what I was going to do the next day. I, I had no idea. But I had enough money either for a, a, a tram I think it might be an idea if we start again, because they, they were pretty loud. Uh, uh, yeah. That's good. I can tell it better. <laughs> Thank you, Val. Thank you, So we'll start again. Shall we take it, take it from... Uh, the last day? <clears throat> okay. So then it, it got to the last day, and I went to my Plinius as always, as usual, and I, and I had enough money left either for a tram ticket to the boarding house or for beer. And I thought, what the hell? I'll have a beer. I walk it. It was about a 45-minute walk. What the hell? Have a beer. So I had a beer, <clears throat> and I sat down. And I, I didn't know what I was going to do. I just sat down. And a couple of minutes later, two minutes later, three guys walk in the door. And they walk in, and, and Plinio goes, hey, Nando, how are you doing? And Nando says, hey, Plinio, great. He said, I've got three months' work booked on the Adriatic coast. Completely booked. The only problem is I can't find a saxophone player. <laughs> so I put my finger, I turn around, put my finger up. Here I am. And Plinio said, Peter's been here for a week looking for work. And they, they paid my board, my lodging, my food. Uh, we started rehearsing. I had three months' work. Rimini, Riccione, Cattolica, Milano, Maritima. And some of the guys became very good friends. We played a couple of years ago in the Divino Jazz Festival in Naples. And one of those guys came up from Salerno to see the band. He now teaches piano in Salerno. Uh, and we sat there reminiscing, and one of the stories was the story. And I thought to myself, if, if I'd have taken the tram, and not had that beer. I would have left the Bar Plinio, walked through the Galleria del Corso, and I would have passed them on the way. You know? I would have walked past my own future <laughs> without knowing. And so I think it's safe to say that that beer changed my life. Definitely. <laughs> you have to be young and foolish to do that kind of stuff. <laughs> I'll tell you honestly, that's one of the best stories we ever heard on, on the recordings. And we did like almost 70, so... <laughs> and you know, there were no telephones at that time, no mobile phones. He didn't, Plinio didn't even know which guest house I was staying in. Yeah. I mean, they'd have gone and said, we need a saxophone boy, and he'd have said, oh, one just... And that would have been me. Yeah. But I decided to have that be incredible. Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, I don't know if I'd uh, maybe I'd still do that now. Yeah, maybe I would. I like to think I would anyway. <laughs>